The origins of the world trace back to the existence of several ancient beings. The first to emerge was Chaos, followed by Gaia, representing the Earth, and finally Eros, the embodiment of love. Gaia gave birth to Uranus, the heavens, who, in turn, became the creator of the Titans. Uranus held a disdain for his children, and he imprisoned them deep within the Earth. Tired of witnessing her offspring's captivity, Gaia crafted a mighty sickle and entrusted it to her son Cronus. Patiently awaiting the opportune moment, Cronus ambushed Uranus as he lay with Gaia and castrated him, causing his severed genitals to fall into the sea. With Uranus neutralized, Cronus liberated his fellow Titans from their subterranean confinement, signaling the dawn of the Titan era. Cronus joined in matrimony with Rhea, a fellow Titan who bore most of the prominent gods. Driven by the fear that his own offspring would one day overthrow him, Cronus imprisoned each newborn god by devouring them whole. In desperate appeal to Gaia for assistance, Rhea implored her to intervene. Out of compassion, Gaia hid Zeus upon his birth on Mount Ida in Crete. When Cronus attempted to consume Zeus, Rhea cunningly substituted a stone, successfully deceiving the Titan. Under Gaia's guardianship, Zeus grew stronger until he was capable of challenging his father. A momentous battle ensued between Zeus and Cronus, culminating in Zeus's triumph. As a consequence, Cronus was compelled to release Zeus's siblings, instigating the war between the gods and the titans. This conflict persisted for twelve long years until Zeus secured the aid of the Cyclopes and the Hundred-Handed Giants, whom Cronus had incarcerated. In a pivotal turn of events, the Cyclopes bestowed upon Zeus his iconic thunderbolt, Poseidon received his trident, and Hades obtained a helmet of darkness, tilting the scales of battle in favor of the gods. Subsequently, the defeated titans were cast into Tartarus, a deep underworld prison, marking the beginning of the gods' reign. Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, the three most powerful gods, convened to divide their dominion, drawing lots to determine their realms. Zeus claimed authority over the sky, Poseidon over the seas, and Hades over the realm of the dead. As the king of the gods, Zeus governed from his celestial throne on Mount Olympus, the abode of immortals. He frequently employed his thunderbolt and eagle as symbols to either caution or inspire mortals. Zeus held sway over all weather phenomena, from lightning to snow, depending on his whims. He safeguarded both the home and strangers, meaning that hospitality was of utmost importance, as disregarding it could lead to dire consequences. Hera, Zeus's sister and wife, bore two notable gods, Ares, the god of war, and Hephaestus, the god of smithing. Zeus's numerous love affairs with other goddesses resulted in the birth of Athena, Hermes, Apollo, Artemis, and Persephone. He also engaged in numerous liaisons with mortal women, fathering the god Dionysus and many heroes, including Perseus and Hercules, who often incurred the wrath of the jealous Hera. Poseidon, renowned as one of the most formidable gods, ruled over the seas, possessed the power to create earthquakes, and was associated with horses, highly esteemed in ancient societies. While he maintained a palace on Mount Olympus, his grandeur was best exemplified by his magnificent abode beneath the sea, where he predominantly resided. Sailors were obliged to offer prayers and sacrifices to Poseidon to avoid perishing in agonizing deaths at sea. Crossing him was highly ill-advised, as he held grudges and was capable of unleashing severe punishments. A remarkable tale involving Poseidon unfolded in the kingdom of Crete, where King Minos annually offered a sacrificial bull to him. However, Minos withheld his cherished white bull, provoking Poseidon's ire. Seeking retribution indirectly, Poseidon influenced Minos's wife, causing her to fall in love with the bull. This ill-fated union ultimately resulted in the birth of the monstrous Minotaur, a half-human, half-bull creature. Hades, the eldest of the three brothers, presided over the underworld, the realm of departed souls. He shared his dominion with his wife, Persephone, and both were revered as deities associated with fertility. 
The underworld featured numerous guardians and trials, making it arduous for both the living and the dead to enter. To gain passage, one had to pay the ferryman, Sharon, hence the ancient Greek tradition of placing coins on the eyes of the deceased. Those unable to afford the fee were doomed to linger eternally on the shores of the river Styx. Beyond Sharon lay Cerberus, the infamous three-headed dog, guarding the entrance to the underworld. Ultimately, the souls would stand before the three judges of the underworld, who determined their fate. Elysium, akin to heaven, served as a serene abode for heroes, demigods, and virtuous mortals. The Asphodel Meadows provided an afterlife for ordinary individuals who neither excelled nor committed significant deeds during their mortal existence. Tartarus, similar to Hell, imprisoned not only the Titans but also transgressors who had incurred the wrath of the gods, where they suffered eternal torment. Hera, Zeus's sister, wife, and the queen of the gods, assumed the role of protector of marriage and women, commanding deep respect in Greek society. She possessed a vengeful and spiteful nature, punishing women who engaged in affairs with her husband and their resulting offspring. Leto, pregnant with Apollo and Artemis, experienced Hera's interference, preventing her from giving birth. Io, another of Zeus's paramours, was transformed into a heifer by Hera and assigned Argos, the hundred-eyed monster, to guard her. The tale of Hercules is a prominent example of Hera's vindictiveness. As an illegitimate child of Zeus, Hercules was targeted by Hera, who sent serpents to kill him in infancy. Nevertheless, the demigod valiantly strangled the snakes with his bare hands. Hera later induced madness in Hercules, leading him to murder his wife and children, which compelled him to undertake his renowned twelve labors. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war, was born in an unconventional manner. Fearing a prophecy that his children would overthrow him, Zeus swallowed Athena's mother, Metis, while she was pregnant. Subsequently, Zeus developed an excruciating headache, prompting him to request assistance from a fellow immortal, who swiftly cleaved his head open with an axe. Athena emerged fully grown and clad in armor, emitting a battle cry. Renowned for her support of heroes, Athena aided figures such as Perseus and Hercules, although she held a particular fondness for Odysseus, striving to ensure his safe return home. Athena enjoyed immense reverence in Athens, which derived its name from her. In a competition with Poseidon over the city's patronage, Athena triumphed by causing the first olive tree to sprout from the earth with a kick, whereas Poseidon created a stream of water by striking the ground with his trident. In honor of Athena's victory, the temple constructed on the Acropolis in Athens was named the Parthenon, deriving from the term Parthenos, meaning the virgin. Ares, the god of war, embodied the savage and cruel aspects of warfare. Neither gods nor mortals held great favor for Ares, as the warfare he represented lacked honor and heroism, epitomizing instead the primal fury and bloodshed on the battlefield. Ares engaged in an illicit relationship with Aphrodite, who was married to Hephaestus. The adulterous couple frequently indulged in their forbidden desires whenever Hephaestus was absent. When Hephaestus discovered their affair, he devised an invisible net, which he placed over their bed before announcing his departure. Caught in the trap as they lay together, Ares and Aphrodite found themselves exposed before all the gods. Only through the intervention of Poseidon were they eventually liberated, amid resounding laughter from the divine assembly. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and love, held sway over sexual attraction for both mortals and immortals, often employing her powers for personal amusement. Accounts of her birth diverge, suggesting she either emerged from the severed genitals of Uranus or was another illegitimate offspring of Zeus. Aphrodite played a pivotal role in the Trojan War when Prince Paris of Troy was tasked with awarding the Apple of Discord to the most beautiful goddess. Out of Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, Paris chose Aphrodite, enticed by her promise to grant him the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. However, Helen was already married to Menelaus, the king of Sparta. Aphrodite ensnared Helen with a spell, prompting her to elope with Paris. 
In response, Menelaus and his brother Agamemnon assembled a formidable army to reclaim Helen, instigating the legendary Trojan War. Artemis, the goddess of the hunt and the twin sister of Apollo, possessed remarkable archery skills and held a significant position among the Olympians. She presided over both hunters and their quarry, ensuring a balance in the wilderness. Artemis jealously guarded her virginity, and any transgression against it faced severe consequences. The hunter Actaeon suffered her wrath when he accidentally stumbled upon Artemis bathing in the nude. In retaliation, she transformed him into a deer and set his own hunting dogs upon him, resulting in his agonizing demise. Apollo, Artemis's twin brother, was a multifaceted deity associated with archery, light, and music, often depicted wielding both a bow and a lyre. Apollo possessed a strong connection to prophecy. Born on the island of Delos, he honored the island by establishing an oracle there. Later, he ventured to Mount Parnassus, where he slew the monstrous snake Pytho, subsequently erecting a temple at the site. This temple served as the foundation for the renowned Oracle of Delphi. Hermes, the messenger of the gods and the patron of thieves, acquired a reputation as a trickster among his divine peers. He delighted in playing pranks and pilfering from fellow deities. Upon reaching adulthood, Hermes assumed the role of the divine messenger, wielding a golden rod as a symbol of his authority. His characteristic attributes included a winged helmet and sandals, enabling him to fly swiftly and deliver messages. Demeter, the goddess of agriculture and the guardian of the harvest, cherished her daughter Persephone above all else. Tragedy struck when Hades developed an infatuation with Persephone and abducted her to the underworld. Distraught by the loss, Demeter embarked on a frantic search for her daughter, lasting nine days and nights. Eventually, the sun god Helios revealed Persephone's captor. Demeter secluded herself for an entire year, refusing to emerge until her daughter was returned. In Demeter's absence, the world plunged into famine. To save humanity from starvation, Zeus commanded Hades to release Persephone. However, since Persephone had consumed food from the realm of the dead, a pomegranate seed, she was bound to spend three months each year with Hades. The remaining nine months allowed Persephone to reunite with Demeter, symbolizing the cyclical nature of the seasons. Thus, during the winter months, when Persephone resided with Hades, the earth experienced cold and barrenness. Hephaestus, the god of blacksmithing, faced a challenging beginning. Born lame, he was rejected by his mother Hera, who cast him off Olympus into the sea, hoping he would perish. Nevertheless, Hephaestus survived and eventually returned to the realm of the gods. As a gesture of reconciliation, Hera arranged for him to marry Aphrodite. Hephaestus excelled as an inventor, crafting magnificent palaces on Olympus and fashioning renowned equipment for various heroes, including Achilles, for whom he forged armor and an exceptional shield. Dionysus, the god of wine and revelry, epitomized the joyous and celebratory aspects of the Olympian pantheon. Frenzied followers, known as Menads, and half-human, half-goat companions called satyrs accompanied him. Dionysus boasted a substantial cult following in Greece, where his adherents engaged in extensive drinking and participated in orgies. The Greek gods encompassed the full range of human virtues and vices, from the bloodthirsty and destructive nature of Ares to the enchanting and seductive allure of Aphrodite. Greek mythology portrays an epic struggle for power between generations, demonstrating the ceaseless quest of parents and children to assert control over the world. Passed down through generations, these tales exemplify the profound influence wielded by these deities throughout human history, continuing to resonate in the present day. Thank you for reading, and don't forget to like and subscribe. For exclusive rewards, please visit our Patreon page.